how you doing this morning, Vash? Is it Vash or Vosh? It's Vosh, but I get called both, so it doesn't really matter to me. And I'm doing good. I'm uh, sleepy. I've got a tummy ache, you know. I'm suffering. But, uh, uh, you know, God is good and life is good. So can't complain. Uh, love that. Well, I hope I hope you get better. Here we go. Oh, so yeah. So I like for- that setup you got there. Yeah, it's uh, uh, maximized for comfort, you know. I've got my uh, water on hand so I can stay hydrated. And I've got Adderall directly in front of me so I can um, uh, uh, stay attentive. It's perfect. <laughs> That's the ideal setup. That's what you want. So <laughs> breakfast of champions. Right breakfast there. of champions. <laughs> so uh, wait, wait, are you, are you in a, like, uh, where are you, if you don't mind the ad, like me asking, like what, uh, you said you just woke up. So what state are you in? Oh, um, uh, uh, Washington. I'm in Seattle. Oh, nice. So we're in the same time zone. That's good. I was like worried that you were like, uh, maybe it was too late or too early for you, but it was, it works out. No, no, no. I just, I just stay up really late. It's, uh, it's, uh, okay. uh I'm, I'm sleepy every day. I wake up. It's a personal yeah. problem. <laughs> same. We got that in common. Yeah. We're also not morning people here. Mm-mm. Yeah. So I, I, I'm interested in talking to you because you, you have, uh, I mean, uh, you have a very like interesting perspective as far as politics go. You're like, you have your own niche. Uh, you know, there, there really aren't that many people on YouTube. There are a lot of people on Twitch or in your, the same segment, but there aren't a lot of people on the, like, you know, you have David Pakman and a whole bunch of other people who, who like are kind of in the left side of things, but you're, you're like in your own niche. So if you could just like, uh, I guess, describe to us, like, you're, you know, um, what you do, you're a political streamer. Um, a, a, do you consider yourself a bread tuber? Oh yeah, before I get into that for my poor suffering audience, um, would y'all mind introducing yourselves? Oh yeah, me? Yeah. So I'm I'm Dennis. Uh I'm uh you know a comedian. A lot of people dispute that though. They <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a channel, Deaf Noodles, uh, where I, I talk about usually like uh I mean a lot of the people come to watch me talk about drama stuff. It's usually like told kind of like the soup, mm-hmm. you know, it's like comedically. The tea. Uh, tea, yeah. So, uh, but with this podcast, we're like talking about broader topics, pop culture, more politics stuff. We just had Christian Walker two days ago. <laughs> it was very interesting discussion. And I have and on this podcast, I have two people hosted with me. Uh, you know, two friends. There's uh, Stephen, who's a comedian. Yeah, Stephen Marcus Relaford, uh, LA native. I've been doing stand up for about 13 years. I'm just an irrelevant co host. I don't know much about it. Oh, any- you don't need to say that. <laughs> I'm just here to add a couple of laughs and two cents if I can, you know. What's up, man? What's up to you? Um, and, and then we have yeah. Leah. Leah. Can't forget Kenauer, Leah. Leah improviser, comedian, co-host of Basic Witches podcast. And yeah, I'm a little more relevant than Steven, um, but um, yeah, just here to have a good time. Yeah. That's the only reason that's, I stream it all. Crew. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you all very much for having me on. Um, <clears throat> to, well, thank to, you for joining us too. My pleasure's mine. To get yeah. back to what you um, you said, yeah, I I I feel like there's kind of a lack of saturation of this particular kind of um, I don't know, political streamer, because uh, mm. you know, Deepak, it's more like the news side of stuff, right? I don't know, like yeah. MSNBC Light. I mean, you have that uh, professionalism that I uh, most certainly don't have. I yeah. don't. I don't really know if I can call myself part of BreadTube because like 98% of people in BreadTube fucking hate me. It seems like an unearned um, uh, association right there. People have called me that though. I don't know if by that they just mean like leftist broadly. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm the right type of queer to be in BreadTube. I feel like I'm the wrong gay. I might be. I don't know. Wait, why, why do they hate you in BreadTube? So, so many reasons. God. Uh, it's every, every week the pile gets taller. Um, Let's say a, a mounting I, pack I of feel the same way disagreements. I feel the, I'm, I'm, I'm all, always, all, I always feel like I'm on the chomping block, but I feel like it's, uh, it's part of being on the internet. I mean, you, you know, what is bread to? Yeah, can you break down <laughs> bread to? I'm not fully familiar with the terminology, the jargon of bread to. So bread to bread tuber. Bread tube is essentially a genre of channels on YouTube who talk from a leftist perspective. They talk about leftist philosophies and, uh, you know, politics, etc. Uh, so that's, I mean, did I do a good job? Bre- what's the, the bread, bread analogy? Is it like bread? Jesus? Like, what is, what's the aspect? <laughs> you want to tell bro? Just give it a hella bread. You want to tell him, Vosh? Yeah, it's, it is that. It's, um, it's about getting maximum bread. It's all a grift. 
No, it's it's a it's a Kropotkin <laughs> reference. Uh, the Conquest of Bread. It's a book. It's an anarchist philosopher. Um, so um, bread tube. I don't know if they were making like a red tube joke, like the porn site off the bat. I don't right. know why they went with bread as opposed to like I don't know, Mark's tube or whatever. But yeah, yeah that's what they hit with. Um, and basically, it just it refers to like I don't even think you have to be a leftist really. There are a lot of social democrats in bread tube. I think you just have to have like gay lighting behind you. You have to be a theater kid. I mean, I do have pink and blue lights behind oh, me. Oh, that's so. me. No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, there's Love some very it. liberal people in 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 bread tube. It's it's a vibes based thing. It's a vibes based <laughs> thing. Okay. So here's the thing. Let let's start. I guess diving into the like the deep, the politics stuff. You know, like it, it, I I I don't know. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you also. I watched some of your streams about the the Roe v. Wade overturning. You know, like. Uh, the the whole thing that's it, it feels like they're gearing up for Obergefell. Uh, so I, I just want to you know maybe get your thoughts on uh, where you see that the country's headed. Are we are we like going back to the 1950s? Yeah, um, I think we might be going back a little farther than that. Unfortunately, <laughs> in in some respects, I should say, um, there there are elements of um, I don't know cultural progress that I don't think are just going to snap back immediately. I think that it's 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 just like pulling a rubber band taunt, you know, like, um, I mean, it, it eventually might go back to a point, whatever's going to happen, your your finger's going to get hurt when, when the band snaps. Um, mm. I, the messaging in this country from conservatives l for a long time, you know, um, has has been pretty unambiguously like return to tradition, you know, and the farther yeah. you get from what tradition is considered to be like the more radical the proponents have to be to push for it. You know, when you're just out from the civil rights movement, I mean, you know, when MLK, you know, was assassinated yesterday or whatever, if you're a white supremacist, the dream of returning to like a, you know, explicitly white supremacist America is not that far off. It's kind of like right around the corner. I mean, you just passed it, you know. Um, mm. But the farther you get from that point, you know, the more and more... Um, radical political action seems like the only possible way of getting back there and that invariably causes problems because liberals historically are really bad at preempting and dealing with that kind of action so hmm. yeah how do you what do you see some of the solutions are like i know a lot of people are talking about codifying stuff uh getting rid of the filibuster i mean honestly it just feels like it's uh we're like locked <laughs> you know like things are you know, like it, it feels like they talk, oh, hey, let's, let's codify it. And you get really close. And of course, it fails at the Senate because Mitch McConnell has it like his hand around it, you know. So, I mean, what are the some uh, outside of that? Do you see any other solutions or how how else do you think we could do it? Because that's also the messaging from Democrats right now. They're saying like, vote, vote, go out and vote, vote for local, you know, local elections, go and do this. And like, you know, it's how, how, like. How often can you vote for people and then nothing gets fucking done? You know what I mean? Yeah, there are patchwork solutions, you know, like getting rid of the filibuster might allow for some action. The problem mm -hmm. is that, first of all, a large part of our government only really operates on gentlemen's agreements. There's not really a way to build a democracy such that if the democracy is filled with elected officials who are acting in bad faith, um, the, all the rules will still be followed. You know, at the end of the day, elected officials are incredibly powerful. And, like, their ability to do stuff is only really checked by everyone else's ability to stop them. So if enough people are acting in bad faith, you know, if you have enough people, uh, the presidency, the, um, you know, Congress, the Supreme Court, who are willing to kind of go along with rules being bent or broken, it doesn't really matter what checks or balances you've taken beforehand. Like, at that point, like, it's really up to them if they want to take those steps. Um, so I think a big part of what has to be done, honest to God, is just um, uh, sedition trials for a bunch of people associated with Jan 6. It sounds super crazy, but like, I mean, it's a trial in a free country. They'll be given their day in court. Everyone gets their, you know, um, years of witness testimony and appeals and blah, blah, you know, the standard affair. But we, we basically have like, like the Republican Party has basically indicated that they're contemptuous of democracy as a concept. Like they're openly mocking it. The largest Republican state party, the Texas GOP. It has recently adopted a, like an official platform that Biden stole the election. You know, this represents millions of Republicans alongside other crazy stuff. They went really far with that platform. Uh, and and if, if there are people in office who are openly contemptuous of democracy, it's really limited what you can do. You know, like you can try to limit their power, but they'll try twice as hard as you because they don't feel like they're bound by the same sort of principles of engagement that you are. Yeah. Do you, do you think that... Uh... 
I mean, out of the January 6th committee, do you think Trump is going to get indicted at all? Or you think it's going to be the kind of, th- you think he'll get away with it? Uh, I feel like it should start at the top, right? Yeah, it has to start at the top. I know, I know the DOJ is investigating. I don't know if anything will come of it. I, it's, it's really, really frustrating because I don't know what the point of the Jan 6 committee is, if not to like preempt a bunch of uh, arrests, um, mm-hmm. unless they're basically just like recording what happened here in a stone epitaph before the coup happens, you know, like, like, mm-hmm. yeah, the Jan 6 committee, at least when historians look back, they'll know why, you know, all this happened. It's like, well, no, that's not enough. You have to do something after you provide all this evidence. It's, right. Yeah. It's, the, it's the DOJ. You can do you can do whatever you want. And we're not talking about like, you know, uh, brown shirt rule breaking here. You know, I think there's plenty of evidence to, to at least arrest some people given what's happened. But yeah. Yeah, it, it does feel like, I mean, it, it, if if by the end of the committee nothing happens, it will, I, I honestly feel like it's going to be kind of demoralizing to democracy itself because it'll be, it'll just show, it'll kind of fulfill the narrative that Republicans are running with right now that that the committee is just theater, right? So... I wish it was musical theater. Yeah. That'd be good. It'd be, it'd be a whole lot <laughs> more, more fun, entertaining. Right? It's entertaining, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I... That's what I, I think. Like I, I think that he should. There's no way that uh, you know you can't watch the the committee and and come to the conclusion that he hasn't committed a crime, right? That he didn't like that wasn't planned. That he didn't go and instigate that crowd, and then that he wasn't annoyed that he couldn't be a part of it. You know, like if from the top, from the jump. You know. Yeah, yeah. like with, like being told the crowd had guns. And then angrily telling a security staff to not check those guns because, quote, yeah. like, they're not here to hurt me. I mean, what, like, you can only take so much from this, right? It's pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty straightforward where, yeah. where, where this is going. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it is all theater until something happens, right? Like, something needs to happen for, I, I, like, it's a faith in democracy thing, if nothing else, right? Like, you know, I have my, um, you know, I have my cynicism, but. You take some average, you know, voting Democrat or whatever. I mean, how are they going to feel if everything goes tits up after all this has been brought to light? Really cuts into the idea that it's even possible to meaningfully check shit like this. Yeah. Steven, I, th- I think you were going to say something. Um, well, yeah, I had two different points, but <laughs> this is kind of coming to mind. Uh, I haven't followed it too much, but we we're talking about it last night. And yeah. allegedly probably the only black participant at January 6th has like the longest sentence time potentially or getting sentenced the longest. Can you <laughs> get some insight on that? I saw, Hey, listen, okay. It's still America, baby. That's how you know. <laughs> That's how you know that the red, white, and blue is still flying over the White House. Um, uh, it's a <laughs> reminder that the institution stands strong. It's, it's so a it little explain, funny. Explain the whole thing for us, for people who may not know the context. So out of everybody who's being sentenced for January 6th, the one black man who was seen caught on a photo, right. Right, right, has so far gotten the longest sentence. And that's in comparison to like the guy who put his feet up in Nancy Pelosi's right. desk, Somebody stole a podium. Out with a podium. <laughs> yeah. You got a whole like elk dude walking yeah, around yeah. with some horns <laughs> and shit like that. So there was like, this dude didn't even show up in costume, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it's very, yeah, it was, um, 63 months the sentence has been pretty light all things considered you know i thought an attack on the capitol building would, would entail a, a higher right. average there are people yeah. who are getting at like 18 months like you know 10 months whatever but yeah this guy got 63 months um which is um yeah america baby you know it's um the uh, land of the free standing strong i guess after all that yeah oh it's uh it's wild i mean it, it just it's it's another example of, of racism like, yeah. just still like you know being something that is that most work <laughs> in this nation yeah uh, it's so shitty to get locked up and you're there with like some other people who were at january 6th and they're all <laughs> leaving before you yeah like bye guys see you all and of course all the other people at gen 6 are incredibly racist so they're like all right you know in their minds they're like yeah of course you're in here longer you know uh so they're they're all walking out like waving like good luck in there you know ah i must suck um yeah it's 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 a real issue the 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 most frustrating thing this is actually with the critical race theorists the actual ones not like the when an elementary school teacher says that we should all get along or whatever you know but like the actual crt theorists this is one of the things they talked about like the myth of neutral uh lawmaking and and the you know law um upholding 
because of implicit bias, even if all the laws in the books are totally neutral, things are still going to come out skewed really hard um, right. against certain groups. They've done implicit bias tests with like sample juries in fake crimes where they have like the same um, group, like evidence collected, but the photos they supply of the criminal are like black dudes, but it's like light skinned black dude, dark skinned black dude, like white dude, whatever. Um, and there are huge disparities in the average recommended sentencing from the fake juries consistently, hundreds of tests, like all the time. And all the laws here, to like everything else is totally the same. So it's really difficult to address stuff like that. It's super frustrating. <sighs> what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's, it's fucked. Yeah, it's frustrating. It like, is. that's all you can do because it's I, like I, yeah. every day you're trying to counter this system of mistreatment. And it's very tough because justice is it's going to take work mm -hmm. justice is a product that takes work and it's like until we actually are able to produce justice i don't think we're going to actually have uh adequate and cohesive and constructive political sphere in any direction yeah totally a, and that's who, how i feel about jan 6 too right like it's not like people think we built the system we didn't like systems need defending you know even if we pretend that right. America as it stands is like some kind of ideal liberal democracy, which it's, it's not. But, you know, even if we pretended that, you know, it needs maintenance. And if, if you're right. willing to let it like fall to the dogs, it, like it doesn't matter how much you built it up. It has to be protected from then it on. It has to be supported. It has to be a real community and insulated with support. And that's why it's really tough to have a quote unquote black community because the black community is not upheld and supported through any other nature or forces other than their own volition as individuals, you know? So the, it's really hard to say you have a community when you really essentially just have people who are displaced and almost on the go because you're constantly in some, you know, either racial dislocation or, you know, have to separate. It's just always like this, you know, all right, hurry up and uh, go, go on to the next town. You know, we're going to price you out of here or you're going to, we're going to offset your interest politically or, you know, we're going to put a candidate in front of you and they're going to say they're going to have your interests at hold. And then once they get into office, they're going to, you know, switch, switch up, switch up. So I got a question. Do you believe that there is any power potentially in withholding a vote? Like if 100 percent of the nation just decided to withhold their votes, would that be any political power leading in the way of like actually people taking it upon themselves to make constructive change? In my opinion, no, because I don't think the Democrats actually care about winning. As far as everything that's like that's getting, do you think conservatives are going to go after Obergefell? You think because now there's like, you know, Thomas had that uh, in his opinion uh, on um, in, in, you know, abortion. He, he also mentioned Obergefell. He also mentioned, uh, I guess, as far as um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, contraceptives uh, and, you know, Ted Cruz last week said it on his podcast that they should look into Obergefell. You think they're going to go after, uh, you know, gay marriage next? Yeah. Um, so just to, to answer the previous one real quick, I don't think vote withholding tends to be that effective because I don't think the Democrats are that motivated by political efficacy. I think that it's, that it's a party staff mostly by dinosaurs who have like fond memories of their effectiveness during the Clinton administration. And mm -hmm. the, the I, I like I don't think they're that responsive to their their voter base. Republicans are Republican politicians will shit their pants like scamper to follow whatever trend they think will get them more voters. Democrats like the fact that Democrats have any difficulty at all with Republicans is a disgrace on the Democrats end because in every empirical metric, it's such an obvious layup and they keep fucking it up every time. Um, so, yeah, it's so I, it's, it's just I think it would work for Republicans. Unfortunately, I don't think it works for us um for the for for the um for the gay marriage shit they're they're totally going to go after gay marriage basically every republican state party um has the revocation of gay marriage as part of their platform they just had to be quiet about it on a national stage while they're waiting for like public opinion to sort out you know because the, the where, where, where it matters you know where it kicks the national election they trump like faked being pro lgbt you know, mm -hmm. like he had the flag and, you know, people were like, ah, you know, he's just after the big companies, you know, he's he's after Antifa, whatever. He's not going after queer people. Of course, that was a lie. Um, and um, and and I think they might have they might like collapse that lie soon. It's the uh, what's what's the term for it? It's called the um, what, the abandonment of the euphemism or something. It's mm -hmm. it's a bad sign when conservatives feel comfortable enough that they can drop all the like phony business and just get right to the point because it means they don't feel like they have to fear public backlash as much.
Right. You think they're going to do the same thing they did with uh, abortion rights? They're going to say we're kicking it back to the states and then, you know, just kind of line up all these states, like you said, are going to essentially who already have platforms to, you know, ban gay marriage will essentially just fall in line and half of the country or three quarters of the country is going to ban gay marriage, like almost immediately. You think that's how they're going to do it again? Yeah, or yeah. Gonna, and that, yeah. that's always step one. Step two is a national ban, always. Yeah. Um, the, the, the leaving it up to the states thing has always been a way of denormalizing any social progress and letting states establish like draconian policies within their own borders in order to, um, pull over as many people as possible and, um, you know, discourage, uh, uh, I, I guess like, um, backlash. The, the real kick is the, um, you know, the upcoming Supreme Court case on, um, the independent legislator doctrine. Because if that goes through, uh, if they interpret that in the most radical way possible, uh, Moore, sorry, Har uh, uh, Harper versus Moore. Harper? Harper v. Moore. Yeah, I always mess that up. If they interpret that in the most uh, radical way possible, they would give the legislators of all the U.S. states basically total control over how elections are done within their states, federal elections. Which means that if they wanted to go, you know, Joker mode, all these red states, and by the way, a majority of states have Republican legislators because only old yeah. people vote down the ticket and they tend to yeah. vote red. Um, and uh, they, they would be able to basically just say like, yeah, we're only allowing like Republicans to win here. They would have essentially unlimited control to gerrymander, to rig the system, to pass laws that could make it really inequitable. It'd be really tough for a Democrat to win under those circumstances. And then we would lose... Uh, uh, the House, uh, essentially forever, um, uh, and and the presidency because the local uh, electorate, the 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 elector count for the um, um, the electoral college would also be fucked. So that's really bad. You know, we have to, we can't let that happen. Uh, that'd be bad. Sorry, I'm rambling, but yeah, it's 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 a huge issue. No, you, it's good to hear because like, do you feel at all that Democrat? Some Democrats are like complicit, like they're purposely like uh, you know being um not as active or pushing back as much as they could when these things are happening or uh, you know uh or being as vocal you know we have a, you know AOC we have Ilhan Omar there are other people who are you know actively speaking against and, and trying to push back against this stuff but I don't know for some reason and, and you know I lived in New York for a long time I, I went to several graduations at, at Brooklyn College Chuck Schumer used to his speeches all the time there for, for some reason, I, I don't feel like he's people like him are doing enough. People who are like in the leadership of the party, they kind of just roll over. They said like, when it happens, they're like, Oh yeah, it's bad. Oh no. Blah, blah, blah. And then like right. next week they're like on the something else. You know what right. I mean? No, no, I, I completely agree. I think some of it is, is a kind of malicious incompetence. I think a yeah. lot of it is, um, is a kind of ideological ineptitude. I think that's that's endemic to liberals and especially bad with with these liberals in particular. I think they have it's like that Obama, you know, they go low, we go high thing. They believe mm -hmm. in, in like the end of history, like ev like major events are done. We found the end system. It's a liberal democracy and we live in one. And it's like this interminable, inevitable unchanging institution that can only ever be affected by very incremental reform, which is why that's all they ever push for. They can't push for radical reform because they don't believe it's possible. Republicans mm -hmm. do, you know, Republicans will scream about, they'll say anything, you know, they'll, they'll promise anything to their followers. Um, yeah. and, uh, and I, I think that kind of sinks into their, their, their thought process. And I think they think it's like a rubber band in the opposite direction where liberal democracy is the norm. And no matter what happens, you know, and no matter how crazy things get, it will always snap back to that norm. And as a product of that, they don't seem to worry that much. You know, I've gotten emails because I, I have a lot of people in my audience who are political mm -hmm. um, advocates or like campaign workers and stuff. They've mm -hmm. met with Democrat politicians, some of them like up to the, the House, you know, like like in Congress. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the what I've gotten back from my followers consistently is that Democrat politicians like basically don't care about any of this because they think it's like fake politics. The idea of like, yeah, the Republicans could make a change that would th that that would prevent Democrats from winning in red states like that sounds like fake to them. It's like some fake made up magic thing that can't happen. That's too radical for this country. So mm -hmm. I, I think they're like ideologically blindsided. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's very dangerous, dangerous stuff. That's one thing that, though, that it, it kind of on the other side, when you compare it, like Republicans always 
it always feels like they're, they move like a team, right? They're, they always like, I think you touched upon it a, a, a minute ago, but they always, they move so well as a yeah. block. And there's like, even the- They're meme, codified. Yeah. And they're, they're codified. A hundred percent. And they're like united by, I mean, I, by this hatred essentially right. of like any progress or anything that differs from their white supremacist agenda or point of view, right? Right. So it, it's just interesting to see though, like there's that meme of like the left eats itself. Like, what do you, what do you, th what would, do you think is like a, a solution for maybe the left to just work better together instead of like fragmenting into uh, and falling to the, you know, cause that, that's what I think happened. Like the conservatives have been so actively working together so well as a group that they were able to get all these justices in, even though they had these two very unpopular presidents come in. Right. And that's how they essentially did the job of the legislative in the, the judicial and that's, uh, I, I mean, that's how you look at Ben Shapiro, even on Twitter, like Ben Shapiro, all these guys, they all have each other's backs, even though like outside of the Daily Wire, like you have people from other companies like Steve, Steven Crowder, uh, Dave Rubin, they all like, they all like work together as one mass to just push their shit forward. It's just, what do you think would, how, how can people on the left do something similar, like organize uh, as effectively as people are on the right are organizing? I think I think a lot goes into it. Some of the things that yeah. go into it are replicable and some of them shouldn't be replicated. I do yeah. think I do think part of it, like a good part of it, I think, is just that a lot of conservative demagogues don't really believe in truth as yeah. like an like an epistemic fact. I, like I think a lot of them will just say whatever because they think everybody is saying whatever, so it doesn't matter. Like they'll make up shit, but they think that's what everyone's doing. They don't really believe there's like a moral difference, so they'll just say what benefits them. That's not something we should replicate. But that does make it pretty easy to fall in lockstep if you don't really have ideological differences because you don't have an ideology outside of like accumulating power. Um they have really good top-down uh, organization. Um, authoritarian personalities tend to be more submissive to orders from the top, so that probably plays a role in it. They have a lot of money going into it. Uh, uh, the, the Koch the, brothers. Yeah, yeah, like the far right, you know, no matter how radical they get, they always tend to be pretty amenable to big business. Far left yeah. isn't, so we don't, you know, we don't get those investments, um, unfortunately. In terms, of, in terms of stuff that can be done, though, I think that, like, a big issue is that conservatives are all trying to pull us back to a single imaginary past and mm -hmm. leftists are trying to push us forward into an infinite number of indeterminate potential futures so yeah. it, it branches out more and it's harder to get along when there are so many paths to take but every racist knows what they want on a fundamental right. level which is white okay. in charge and that's like yeah. one line back right like that's pretty simple you know um yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like there's less infighting to be had when everyone can basically agree on what the end point of their ideology is. And everyone, I mean, sometimes they want to go back 50 years, sometimes 100, you know, what, you know, um, a lot of stuff like that. I think that's why the right makes appeals to the past really often. It's really, really easy to organize politics around the return to like a mythological starting point. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's it's really tough to manage. Yeah, their their level of organization is, is it's pretty tough to match. It's pretty crazy. I, I often, we talk about this often. I mean, we've, we've mentioned it a bunch of times that it almost feels like they want to go back to like the pre Jim Crow. If they could, they would take us all the way back to, you know, like the Confederate era. It, it, it's like they're fulfilling the, the mission, you know, of yeah. like uh, bringing back, bringing the South back, you know, of like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we, we never from... finished reconstruction. We, yeah. we, you know, uh, Lincoln gets assassinated, the project ends, they've been doing this South will rise again, like Confederate apologia bullshit for, for centuries, as early as yeah. like, I mean, even right now, re like Republicans will defend to their death, the, the validity of the Confederacy or like celebrating the icons of the Confederacy, which is the yeah. same thing. Celebrating the heroes of a slave state is not meaningfully different from celebrating the slave, the slave state. You're doing the same thing. You're just doing it through one level of of ideological obfuscation you know and and we never finished reconstruction so like yeah these these ideologies are going to go through i would not be surprised if a lot of people in the gop like legitimately do think that we would function better as a slave state or a white ethno state or whatever because i, I mean ideas don't die without help they 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 fester and they grow and you know we're, we're not exactly chasing hairs here you know 
the GOP has been pretty committed to defending, like, Confederate statues and shit. Like, it's not abstract. It's pretty upfront, like, how, wh what their positions are on this, you know, where they fall on that line, the, the Mason-Dixon line specifically. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that gives you hope, or is there someone that you do have faith or trust in, or do you feel overall very cynical about where our country is going? I feel pretty cynical about where our country is going. The main thing that gives me hope is the fact that um, fascism is ideologically incompetent. Um, it can't manage itself for long. Mm -hmm. I also think um, there, are, there are a couple of things that give me hope. You know, even if things get really bad, I don't think it'll be that sustainable for long. I, the military tends to lean left, interestingly, as an institution. That's not often the case in, in countries, but here it seems to be, which is cool. Um, so that's, that's kind of like a bulwark, you know, like it, 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 it gives us some time. The fact that the United States is relatively federalized also means that it, it's impossible for anything like what happened in Germany to happen here. You know, because in Germany you have like, you know, Hitler gets appointed, uh, uh, you know, uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, congrats, fake election, he's in charge, everyone falls in line, you know, pretty easy stuff. Here in the U.S. we have, you know, all these, the state guard, you know, we have the, 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 the a million like levels of bureaucratic control over local policing and, you know, uh, militia groups and everything. And everything's so decentralized and fragmented that it feels like it'd be impossible for anything to be done in a clean sweep. Whatever happens, it would have to be slow and dirty. And that does give like us time because fascists are really, really bad at sustaining any kind of like, um, political effort like they're really good at getting it off the ground but keeping anything going that long is difficult they're not that great at it but would it be possible for like hitler to be decentralized instead of one hitler we have 50 in each state well you know at least that's harder than one right that you'd have to you'd have to roll the unlucky on the dice pretty often for that to for that to come about i think i i think i think um we do have a lot of stuff going in our favor for like the blue states staying safe, you know? Um, economically, this country is like uplifted in large part. I'm sorry, I say in large part, basically like overwhelmingly by its cities. And the cities of America, no matter where you go, are left leaning. Like overwhelmingly, cities are left leaning. Um, and some of the largest cities are very, very left leaning, you know, LA, New York, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it would be really difficult to maintain the productive forces within this country while also like purging the the liberal and leftist political element. There are a lot of parts of this country that are too complicated, too broken up to really be unified under a fascist banner and not like fall apart under their own weight. That's just a hope that I have, you know, can't predict the future or nothing. I just, I think there are logistical problems with the idea of like a full takeover, you know? I think an attempted takeover, that's likely. Um, I mean, we had one already, you know? Maybe a more successful attempted takeover. But I don't think it'll, um, I, I don't know how far that'll go. Yeah. Um, Leah, can I, can I ask a question, Vouch? Are, are you, uh, do you, do, what? Can Leah do a reading of you? She oh, does. God. She does a whole bunch of. Uh, she does. She usually does like readings. I, I always just thought it would be interesting. Are you? Are you into that kind of stuff? Watch? I love reading. Yeah. You love reading. Okay. It's not a book. It's not like reading a book. Um, have you ever had your cards read or like a tarot? Been to a psychic or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, like, I. I uh, you know, actually, no. I can't say I have. Cool. Up in the cherry. Um, so I have three decks here. Um, I'm feeling like the deck of hearts is for you. So these are all positive mantras. Is there something on your heart, on your mind, anything going on in your life that you would like to ask the universe, ask spirit about? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> um, hmm. All right. Let me think. I want to I want to I want to give it a good one. OK. OK. How long? How long will it be before I can hit 225 on the bench again? That's what I want to oh, know. Oh, love that. <laughs> love that. Practical. Okay. Yeah, I want just very, yeah, simple, clean. We'll get um, there. Okay. <laughs> Let's ask Mr. Vosh's cards. Let's all breathe.
Getting swole. We can all hope. Oh, yeah. You'll get there. Uh, this is your card. Oh, I'm a boss. And the two S's are dollar signs. I think that means very soon, keep it up, tap into that boss energy, keep pumping that iron, you'll get there very soon. Oh shit, thank God. Okay, I gotta outpace my high school self. I was swole as hell back then. You could do it again, yeah. Yeah, we're, we, uh, we're returning to tradition, but in the good way. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. Um, anyway, I mean, this has been a really good discussion. I love having you on. I'd love to have you on more often. I feel like you you really, I mean, I, I watch your streams as much as I can. I work like a fucking maniac. So, but as much as I can, I try to grab, you know, uh, your streams and see what you're talking about. Cause you're always like super informed and you have a great perspective on things. So, uh, I, I want to thank you for stopping by. I know you're a very busy guy. Uh, it seems like you want to say something. Oh yeah. I, I keep, I keep forgetting that I'm on camp. Yeah. Oh, I've watched you pro probably longer than you've watched me. It's, it's pretty cool. Talking oh, wow. You. You know, I, uh, no, I, uh, I, 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 I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, I also, I just want to, just on a, on a note, you know, I don't want to be all, you know, negative politically or whatever. Yeah. I think a lot of cool stuff is happening, you know, broadly, ideologically. It's just like, there are these hiccups that we have to get over, you know? And I think, like, a lot of what we're dealing with right now would have been a non-issue with competent, li like, even liberal leadership, you know? I'm like, if, if I want to, like, cross my fingers, like, you know, if socialists were in charge, but, like, sure, right, okay, fine, of course I think that. But even with competent liberal leadership, you know, I think a lot of the stuff we're going through right now would be a lot more manageable. Um, so it's I'm, I'm hoping that things don't get so bad that this can be seen as a kind of, um, yeah, I don't know, a wake up point. I just want to say just as a it, 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 do you mind if I plug something um, oh, yeah, altruistic plug, real quick? Plug whatever you want. Yeah, I'm trying to get my 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 good people in my audience to uh, to canvas. I, I've paired up with some people who are campaign organizers and strategists and, and shit mm -hmm. um who are, are like organizing an effort to get as many uh people in my audience out there like connect them with local campaigns you know like hey mm -hmm. you all live in this like you know uh, uh voting district you know maybe you want to go over here this campaign's doing volunteering or this they need canvas you know um and we've got like two and a half thousand people that are already signed up for it I don't oh, that's know. great if any, yeah if any of the fine people in your audience you know can deal with the my insufferable fans Wait, um, you want to you want to email me the link and then I can I can drop it in my chat and I'll share it on my video tomorrow too. Oh oh uh, yeah 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 I'll uh, yeah I'll email it to you and I appreciate that. Yeah, email it to me right now. I'll pull it up uh, and I'll drop it in the chat so people can grab it. Uh, hold up, let me send it right now. Canvassing's a lot of fun, you know. Uh, you're getting some vitamin uh, D being out there, you're touching some grass, make good friends. It's a lot I of fun. agree. I agree. Little door knocking. It's good to be outside yeah. every once in a while. Yes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. breathing some fresh air it's like the jordan uh, peterson you know advice of leftist circles like you know maybe go outside once in a while you know maybe <laughs> allow sunlight to touch your skin a couple of times a month it's like yeah, a couple of really? times a month <laughs> yeah, I'm sending it to you okay cool i really appreciate you all taking the time to talk with me yeah man it was oh, fun yeah. yeah it was great i think it's uh you know, we do we do talk about politics. We're not at like not to the depth that you talk about, because uh, you're you're obviously like this is you're you're a great political mind. You talk about it all the time. You're super informed. But we're like we talk about it in like a funny way. We try to because I feel like it's more important than ever now with like the country. Like we yeah. said, the country's moving backwards at like a faster pace than ever before. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's good to to have awareness of the what's going on and constantly. You know, know that like if we're not doing something, if you're getting comfortable, uh, you know, because oh, oh, we got all this stuff now, and then all of a sudden it can be gone just as quickly as we got it, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, women are losing their rights, uh, and the gay people are about to lose their rights, and then it's just gonna keep going down the line, and then eventually, you know, we'll find ourselves in a place that we don't want to live in, you know? Um, yeah. No, one hundred percent. There's um <clears throat> an analogy I'm fond of. There was a book that I read as a kid. It's a weapons book, like like drawings of like swords and stuff, you know, throughout mm -hmm. history. And I, I really like that book. And when they got to modern history, they talk about um, uh, fortifications, you know, walls, yeah. bamboo, spike pits, traps, uh, the, you know, moats, whatever. And the 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 big line they hit with that section was: no matter what obstacle you build, any 
group of people can get through it given enough time. They're completely useless on their own. They always need to be guarded. And that's how I feel about democracy, too. You can build the coolest, most fancy, you know, liberal democracy in the universe, but unless you're willing to defend it against attacks, like, it doesn't mean anything, because it can always be dismantled, given enough time. Facts. Facts. Here, I just dropped the link in the in the chat right now, so uh, it should be coming through. Uh, and I'll, I'll make sure I'll share it, too. I'll, I'm going to promote the stream on my uh, my video tomorrow, so I'll share the link. I'll, I'll pin it in my uh, comment. Uh, but, yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Uh, yeah, anytime you want to stop by, I'd love to have you more often. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's been a delight. Uh, thank you. You're very kind. And I um, look forward to talking to the three of you in the near future. You have a good one, okay? Yeah, it's yeah, nice shit. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. We might be in Seattle doing a tour soon. So. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, okay. Steven's touring all over all over the country right now with uh, his uh, comedy show. He's going to be in New York. He's going to go yeah. stop by Seattle soon. So Keep me uh, updated. I know a few good gay bars around here. Oh, perfect. Let's do it, man. Drinks on you. Yeah, absolutely. I would, ne I, would, I would never disrespect you otherwise. <laughs> Y'all have a wonderful day. You too. you too. Thank you so much. Take care. You too. That was nice. Are these people again? That's, um, de uh, de Death Noodles is the, the channel they're associated with, I think, in Maine. I, I, I want to get, um, I want to get, like, the professional links for the other two so that when this gets made as a video, they can be posted in the description. Because I don't know offhand, like the comedy show, I don't know the link. I'll I'll find it. I'll find it. Yeah, um, yeah, that was that was nice. That was the first. Yeah, Death Noodles is uh is a is a really cool guy. You know, been doing this for uh, a while. I want to see their talk with Christian Walker, man. That's got to be a banger right there. But yeah, if if you um, I I, I recommend um. Checking them out, yeah, the Deaf Noodles show and the De Deaf Noodles on uh, Twitter. Yeah, you should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll link. Of course, I'll link in the. I feel like you just went on a normie radio show. I love talking outside my bubble. It reminds me that it's actually possible to have conversations uh, outside of like the hyper specific. You know, yeah. Okay, yeah, to clarify for chat, because I saw people saying, but I didn't want to, like, argue with chat while I was talking with them. There were federal elements to Germany, but I think that, like, there are a number of things about the federalization of America that would make it way more difficult for there to be a clean sweep. Um, like, a ton of stuff. I think, I think the main thing, though, like, the main kicker is, um, the main kicker is the economy, though, right? Because, like, I, I think a huge part of the American economic supremacy that we enjoy comes from ingenuity, innovation, and the service sector, right? Like, so much of it comes from stuff. Like, a whole, like, the, like, German economy could be maintained through factory production, which is what they did. They sustained it with, like, war, war loot, and they kept the economy, like, m like, it was like a, a war machine. Like, the whole economy was a war machine. But America isn't an industrial manufacturer, you know? Um, it would be really, really difficult for a fascist takeover in America to, like, not totally fucking nuke our economy. You know what I mean? Like, I I'm not saying it's impossible, just that it's... It's, it's difficult, you know? Um, yeah, I, I can talk about it more.